Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. The economic data released about South Africa over the past few weeks has been far from positive. Terence Kramer joins me to discuss the implications for the real economy and the prospects for avoiding a recession. Hi Terence. Hi. The latest Kiso PMI contracted significantly. What does this say about the real economy? Well, I think it basically says that we're in a weaker position than we ever thought we were going to be at this point in a cycle where there's a recovery going on in some parts of the world. And basically it also says that manufacturing, the spillover from the platinum industry strike, um, is having a di direct impact on the manufacturing economy. So those sales that came from the local domestic manufacturers, people that supply equipment and inputs into platinum mining, that those sales are not taking place. And it also says, you know, that we are in a weak position in terms of um, our exports. So our real economy, you know, the mining exports definitely have contracted massively with the, the platinum strike. And also our manufacturing, uh, the, the base load that's provided by the domestic economy is not coming through, which I think is undermining volumes as well as the competitiveness of the industry. And we, I think we can see it in, in the trade figures as well. We're seeing massive deficits coming through. Uh, on the trade accounts, I think year to date we're around uh, negative 40 billion. So overall, I think the the picture from the painted by the PMI is one of uh, a very weak and depressed manufacturing sector, one that's in contraction mode, and one of the more worrying subcomponents of that index is the fall, especially in the employment outlook. So not only is the the output um, and the exports from manufacturing looking weak. But we're also looking at a, a situation where employment uh, in the sector is coming under pressure. And amid this poor performance, a number of economies have actually picked up. Can you discuss this? Yeah, well, I think that's the, that's the worrying sign for South Africa. You know, we had the Great Recession. Um, we've had, you know, which was precipitated by a financial crisis in 2008, 2009. We went into a very difficult year in 2009 where we shared a million jobs. We went into our first recession since the advent of democracy. And I think uh, we, we, you know, we're, we're at a time now where we really should be in a recovery mode. Much of the rest of the world is in that recovery mode. We see the US is going to grow faster during this 2014 year than it has for quite a few years since subsequent to the financial crisis. We see that Europe, although it's got serious problems and serious headwinds, and there are threats of issues like deflation. Europe is also on sort of sort of a slow but painful recovery. Um, China, where there's still concern around whether there'll be a hard landing, is continuing to some uh, hopefully surprise on the upside. But you know the the growth uh, coming out of China is going to be at a much lower rate than what we've become accustomed to. So that double-digit type Chinese growth is probably behind us, and we're looking at the sort of seven to seven and a half percent growth for this year. But it's still growing, and you know, there, while there's still concerns around things like uh, whether the shadow banking sector there can undermine the economy and whether they can do this big shift away from investment to the consumer, and there are concerns about what that could, what the implications of not doing that are going to have for the world. China still seems to be doing quite well, and then our neighbourhood, which is the rest of Africa, sub-Saharan Africa, is really showing quite amazing resilience to what's happening in the rest of the world. It's continued to grow through the crisis, and the outlook for the current year is continuing, uh, continuing upward trend. Now, of course, in Africa, um, unlike South Africa, it's, you know, Africa's very uh, much less developed economies off lower bases, but it's still an uh, upward tra trajectory. The one fear there, I think, is how widely spread the growth benefits are for Africans and whether it's only being captured by a few in the elite. And the big question surely is whether or not South Africa is headed for a recession. Well, our new finance minister in uh, I think tried to hit the, you know, that speculation on the head by saying he doesn't think that we are heading for a recession in 2014. But it, you know, a recession is really defined as two consecutive quarters of, uh, of contraction. And, um, you know, we've had this first quarter of 0.6% decline, um, which was worse than expectations. And a lot of it, as I mentioned earlier, related to the platinum strike. We're into a second quarter where that strike hasn't abated. 
there's signs maybe that it's coming to its peak and maybe it's coming to an end, but it hasn't ended and there's going to be a long ramp up period for those platinum companies. So we're not going to go get the the sales and the uh, tax revenues that we used to from that sector. There's also this climate of just general negativity, I think, in the investment climate. Uh, the you know the election has knocked us. We've had a lot of public holidays. We see these terrible um, uh, vehicle sale figures, and just generally, there's uh, not a climate that's sort of friendly to further investment and job creation. So I think technically, the prospect of falling into a recession is very real on that technical level. Whether we'll have a full year of recession in 2014, I think. That depends on how quickly the strike can get uh, one, one resolved, as well as you know ramp up in that platinum sector, but also that whole negative sentiment and lack of confidence that a lot of these labour actions have had, not just this year, but we've had a, a number of uh, um, labour actions over the last few years, which has really dragged down confidence. Whether we we can see some sign that that's abating now. It's not very clear because I think we really see in the agriculture sector the sugar industry has gone into strike. There's big debates about uh, whether the metal engineering sector is headed the same way. And there seems to be this sort of disconnect between uh, what the economy needs and what some of the social actors within this economy are doing. And I don't know whether the, there's the confidence in the current crop of leadership, which we've got a new, new leaders in the form of cabinet, and it's unclear whether they've built the, the trust and confidence that are needed to know to amongst all the social actors, labor, business, civil society, and the companies that are directly involved, whether that, that trust relation re really exists, that we can start building and getting ourselves out of this very low growth um, uh, profile that we've now sort of become accustomed to. So technically, I think, it's going to be touch and go whether South Africa avoids recession this, with just one more quarter, which has already been highly disrupted. Um, you know, if we have a negative uh, uh, performance during that quarter, we will technically be in recession. But you know, the figures from the uh, um, South African Reserve Bank, which have been revised down already from around 2.6 percent growth for the year to around 2.1 percent. So that is a, a major downward revision, but they're still positive. Okay, maybe there was a factoring of an earlier end to the platinum strike. We don't know. In uh, February this year, the finance minister put out a 2.7%. The then finance minister was Pravin Gordon, 2.7% growth for the year. That's looking optimistic. And I think the next big signal, other than from the Reserve Bank, is that we're going to need to see what the new finance minister, Nklan Klanene, says when he puts out revised figures in his upcoming medium-term budget policy statement that usually takes place around October. So that's going to be watched very carefully. But I think uh, technically to avoid this recession might be quite tricky. But let's uh, hope that this new le leadership um, uh, and the, the desperation in business to try and get some sort of visibility of the policy direction and the approach we are taking and, and that sort of coming together with all the social partners getting around a table, hopefully maybe this platinum strike or resolution to it could be the vanguard of something bigger, where we really say that we need to re start rebuilding the relationship of trust between the social partners, which in the end is going to, you know, the oxygen that we really need now is confidence, investor confidence and confidence in this economy, which is really, really lacking. And we are being starved of that oxygen and we really need to see signs that we can uh, reinstall and re-inject some confidence so that we can get out, extract ourselves from this low growth profile. Thanks, Terence. That is the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.